Hello guys, welcome back to Steve Fashion Academy. Today I'll be teaching us a very great topic, how to cut and sew a short collar jumpsuit. So guys, I want you to make sure you pay attention, make sure you watch to the end, and make sure you give us a thumbs up. Make sure you like this video to have access to some of our other videos, especially the sewing aspect of this particular tutorial. And make sure you don't forget to subscribe. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe. And make sure you follow us on TikTok. Bye and may God bless you. Okay guys, as you can see, we are going to be cutting a jumpsuit. So, and we have done the measurement. So, if you did not see the measurement, you did not watch the measurement, make sure, make sure I put it in the description box so that you got there, click the link and then watch it. So, um, let's start with the... In order for you to cut the jumpsuit, like I say, jumpsuit is a combination of the upper bodies and the lower bodies. The upper bodies being the blouse part of the jumpsuit, while the lower bodies being the trouser. So we are going to be cutting one first. I think the one we are going to be working on now is the upper bodies. Do you understand? And this upper body, as you can see on your screen, this is the style of the upper bodies we are going to do. So it is more like a short collar, but this one is an attached short collar. Do you understand? It's a kind. There's also kind of overlapping. That's what we are going to be doing now. So the first thing we are going to be doing. Okay, I forgot to tell us we have our measurements here. This is the measurement. The shoulder is 16 inches. The bust is. That is the bust length is 11.5, um, while the round bust is 40.5. The under bust is the under bust length is 15, while the round under bust is 35.5. The half length is 18. A half length is 18, while the round half length is 35.5. Is I want you to know something about this half length. Is either you measure it or there is another way of getting the half length. Now the way of getting the half length is. Your under bust length, if it is 15, you can add from 3 inches to 4 inches to it. Do you understand? As you can see on this one, let's say the under bust is 15. 15 plus 3 is what? 18. So that's another way of getting your half length, where the um, trouser is going to start from. Okay. So the let's talk about the hip. The hip is 28 inches. Um, the hip length is 28 inches, while the round hip is 44. Now, by me looking at this, you notice that this hip length, we have this and we have this. This one is when you use a full method measurement. You understand what I mean? When you measure from shoulder to the hip line, that is this particular. Why this one now is when you measure from the half length to the hip line. Are you seeing it? Okay. From shoulder to the hip line is 28 and the round hip is 44. Then from the half length to the hip line is 10 inches and the round hip is 44. So the crotch length, the same thing, from the shoulder to the crotch length is 30 inches. That is the full measurement. Why the, from the um, half length to the crotch length is 12 inches. Okay, we have the round side which is 28 inches and we have the knee, the full knee, the full measurement is from shoulder to the knee is 43 inches while the round knee is 19. Then the half method of measurement from the half length to the knee is 25 inches while the round knee is 19 inches. Then the full length is 64 inches why the round ankle is 14 inches using the half length method the that is from the half length to the where the trouser is going to end is 46.5 why the round ankle is 14 inches so we are going to be use this measurement now to draft the upper bodies like i say we are going to draft the upper bodies first then we now use it and draft the lower bodies which is the trouser okay in order for you to draft the upper bodies we are going to do the folding part first. Do you understand? So in order for us to fold, we usually make use of the highest circumference. In this case, the highest circumference on the upper bodies is the bust. Hope we are correct. The bust is 40.5. So we are going to be dividing by 4. So 40.5 divided by 4. 40.5 divided by 4 is 10, 1, 8. Okay, so we are going to be adding extra 5 inches to it, which will give us what? 15, 1, 8. Okay. Now, that means we are going to be folding how many? 15, 1, 8. Okay. Now, look at this. Just measure out 15, 1, 8. It's even if you measure out something that is more than the 15, 1, 8. Let's say in a situation where you measure 16 inches, it is still very much okay. While we are using this method of folding is to make sure that we don't use anything less than 15, 1, Eight. Do you understand? So when you are done marking your 15, 1, 8 or 16, whichever one, all you have to do is to use your ruler and then trace on it. The next thing you will have to do now is to fold. Make sure you fold accurately. So as you can see, we have actually folded this particular one. We folded it to be 15, 1, 8. Are you seeing it? Okay. 
So next thing we are going to be doing now is we are going to be considering the length. Now look at it. The length of the half, like that is the half length itself. The half length is 18 inches. Are you saying it? Okay. Now I want you to do something. I want you to mark 18 and extra one to it. This one is the same allowance. Do you understand? That is total of 19. As you can see, I've actually marked it here. All you have to do is to take your rule and lay. Okay. Then the next thing you are going to be doing now is cut it off. There is something I want to let us know. I don't know if you actually watched uh, my shirt cutting and the other dress like a senator. You notice that I normally make use of this method I call the together method. That is, I cut both the front and the back together. Do you understand? Okay, so that is the method I'll be using on this particular dress. Now, as you can see, this is the front part, the um, uh, material for the front part. Okay, now look at this particular one. This one is the one I'm going to be using for the back part. But there's something I really want you guys to um, um, see here. The back part is always longer than the front part. Are you seeing it? Okay. The back part is always two inches longer than the front part. Are you seeing it? Okay. So this is how it's going to be. Now we have gotten the material for the front and material for the back. Okay. There's something I also want you to do here. Remember the, um, the short collar is an overlap. Do you understand? Now, let's say in a situation whereby we have something like this. This I want you to look at this thing very well. And this is the half length. Now, see, look at it. This is the center. Are you seeing it? The overlap is coming from here down to here. Why this other one is coming from here down to here? Are you seeing? So, meaning from the center here, from here to here, we have something like two inches. Are you seeing it? Two inches. Look at it from center to here to two inches. Why from this one to here to two inches? What this thing means is that we are going to have something like a zipper allowance. That is two inches zipper allowance. That is actually the overlap. Do you understand? Look at it here. Two inches zipper allowance like this. Please, I want you to know that this is something as working an overlapping dress. Look at it. Two inches zipper allowance. Okay. I want you to look at it here. Are you seeing it for the front? So you can fold it out. You can fold it out if you want. Okay. I know some of us might be wondering what of the back. Remember, this one is for the overlap. The back also should have its own allowance. Now, for the back is act the actual zipper allowance. Remember, the zip is still going to be at the back. So let's mark out the zipper allowance for the back, which is the same thing as two inches. Two inches for the zipper allowance. Are you saying it? Now still take your rule and the join. So when we are done, as you can see, we are actually done. Are you looking at it now? We are actually So you can either put the boots or lift both of them. Are you seeing it? So next thing we are going to be doing now is that I want you to notice something. Both of these are equal from the upper part. They are by leaving the excess two inches. Remember, the back is longer than the front with what two inches, thereby leaving the excess at the damp part. So, all you have to do now is to take your pin and they pin this so that it will not shift. Okay, guys, as you can see, I've actually pinned it, and the back is still longer than the front with two inches, but that is actually showing from the damp part. Now, next thing you need to do now is to do what we call the shoulder slope. Remember, nobody's shoulder is straight, no individual shoulder is straight, all our shoulders are slanted. It depends on how your own is. So in order to slant the shoulder, that is the shoulder slope, all you have to do is from here. Are you seeing it? From here. Please don't start from here. Because if you start from here, it means, see, this part is not, this is not part of your measurement. Are you seeing it? Here is for the overlap. Are you seeing it? Why here now you are seeing that is for the zipper allowance. So everything you are doing is supposed to be starting from here. So the shoulder, which is actually 16 inches, 16 divided by 2 is 8. 8 plus half is eight and a half. Are you seeing it? So from here, step down by two inches. Now, I want you to know that shoulder slope for female is from one to two inches. Do you understand? Why for men is from two inches to three inches. Now for the sake of this tutorial, we are going to be using two inches as you can see. Now look at it. From here, connect. Are you seeing it? From here, connect. Now that you have connected, next thing you are going to be doing is with your scissors, Cut both of them out. Now I want you to notice something. I'm cutting both the front and the back out together. Cut it out. Thereby observing the shoulder slope. 
Okay, now after you are done cutting it, the next thing you are going to do is to loosen the pin. When you loosen the pin, you can now be able to move this. Are you seeing it? Move it down. Make sure that both of them are equal from the down, thereby leaving the excess 2 inches allowance at the upper part. Now when you are done, next thing you are going to do, if you are working with your fabric, take your iron, fold here and then iron it out. If you are working with paper as a pattern paper, the way I am doing now, all you have to do is use your hand and then fold here out. Are you seeing it? Okay. Now we are done now with the shoulder slope. Next thing we are going to be doing now is let's draft the ambo. Do you understand? So in order for you to draft the ambo, you have to remeasure the shoulder again. Now measure back the shoulder. Please, I want us to know the reason why we did this. It's not like you cannot make upper bodies without using this method. The reason why I'm doing this thing is I just want to make a cloth that will relax so much, like it will relax very well on the shoulder part. Do you understand? That's the essence of using this method, for it to relax very, very well. Okay. Now, let's mark out the shoulder, which is 8 plus half, making it 8 and a half. Please make sure you also do the same thing here. Hope we all know why we are doing it to two places in order to get a straight line. Take your rule and the mark. Please take your rule and the mark. I know some of us will be asking, where exactly are we going to be stopping on? Some of us will be asking, where exactly are we going to be stopping on? You are going to be, see, that same question is same thing as what is going to be the armhole length. Now the armhole length, the easy way of getting the, the easiest way of getting the armhole length is whatever you use from here to here. What did we use? The shoulder, which is 16 divided by 2, is 8 inches plus half seam allowance, making it 8 and a half. That is the same thing we are still going to use here. From here, measure and a. Look at it. From here, 8 and a half. Are you seeing it? This is the point at which we are going to stop. If you like, you can also make use of your tape. It's actually the same thing. Are you seeing it? From here, 8 and a half. Okay, when you mainly when you get this part, all you have to do is to take your rule and then connect to get a horizontal line. Are you saying it? Because I want you to know this method that we used, that is the shoulder divided by two plus half that we used to get our arm hole length, is very much correct. If you like, you can there are also make different methods that you can also use, which is the round was divided by six plus. 1.5. We have already now have that method. It's a universal method of getting your armhole length. So whichever one you want to use, but all I want you to know is that this is the simplest way I get the armhole length. Okay, next thing we are going to be doing is to, we are going to finish constructing the armhole itself. And I want you to know something. In most cases, I know most of us must have seen armhole. Armhole is usually in this form. Are you seeing it? Now, I want you to know before you get this shape, how exactly do you get this shape? You get this shape by placing your tape like this. Are you seeing it? They are going now from this point. Look at the vertical line, look at the horizontal line. Both of them are joining at this very, very point. Place your tape diagonally like this. Measure one inch. Are you seeing it? Okay. Then when you are done doing that, next thing you need to do is, look at it. Eight and a half is our armhole length. The, the midpoint of your armhole length, that is eight and a half divided by two, which is going to be giving us what? Four one quarter. Okay, now look at it. Four one quarter. Are you seeing it? This is actually the midpoint. Now we have this point. Look at it. We have this point and we have this point. So all we are going to be doing is from here connect to this point, then down to this point. Look at it, guys. Connect gradually. As you can see, we've already gotten. See, see the green line. What we did before is the same thing as here. Look at it. Please, I want to let you know something. You can either use your free hand. Or you can use other curves. We have what we call the ample curve, the French curve, etc. I even go ahead to use a broomstick to get it. So whichever one you want to use, you are good to go. Next thing we are going to be doing, still on the armhole construction, is what we call the armhole effect. I want you to know that this armhole effect, why do we even have armhole effect on dresses? We have armhole effect so as to reduce the excess puffing and rumple from the dress. We I know we almost have noticed that some dresses, when you look at the armhole region and the shoulder region, you notice rumples there. Do you understand? So in order to reduce all these rumples, we have to apply the armhole effect. And I also want you to know that it's not only armhole effect that reduces all these rumples. The shoulder slope also helps in doing that. Now, in order to get this armhole effect, I want, also want you to know that this armhole effect is only applied in front, not at the back of the armhole. So in order to apply it, look at it. From the midpoint that we've gotten already, look at it for one quarter. Are you seeing it? Place your tape like this and step back with three quarter. You can step back with from 0 0.5 to three quarter. Now look at it. From here, I'm using what? Three quarter. Now at the end of the day, I have this point. 
I have this point, I have this point, then onwards. Are you seeing it? Next thing you have to do is to connect from here using your core core freehand. Look at it. Okay. So when you are done, as you can see, we are 100% drawn with the armhole. I want you to know something. Why cutting this? I want you to know that you are not going to be cutting all these things, following this armhole effect, all of them. What you are going to be doing is you are going to be cutting following this particular one. Are you seeing it? Now, let me show us something. Look at it. You are going to be cutting like this. Are you seeing it? Then when you are done cutting, next thing you are going to be doing is what? Cut, lift this one up and cut out the front part separately. That shows that you are applying the armhole effect only on the front. Okay. Now when you are done, you can see the armhole is 100% ready. Next thing we have to do is to mark out our um, vertical measurements. Please, this vertical measurement, you can mark it out before the armhole or after the armhole. So let's mark it out. The vertical measurement, we have the bust length. The bust length is how many inches? 11.5. Okay? 11.5. Why the under bust length is what? 15, 15 inches. And the half length is? 18. 18 plus 1, one which is 19. Okay. So Let's impute the horizontal measurement. So let's start with the bust. From here, because I always want you to know that this part is not part of your measurement. So let's start from here. The round bust is 40 and a half divided by 4 is how many? 10. 10.18. Okay, 10.18. Look at it, guys. Okay, then you add how many inches allowance? How many? Two inches allowance, okay? You add it like this. Are you seeing it? So let's go to the underbust. The underbust is how many? So 35.5 divided by 4 is 878. Okay, look at it here. 878 should be after 8 3 quarter. Yes, that is it. Look at it. So at the end of the day, you add how many inches allowance? Two inches. Two inches allowance. Then I want you to know that if you are putting that, if you are adding that to this particular dress, you should not be adding 2 inches allowance. You add from 2.5 to 3. In fact, from 3 inches allowance. Do you understand? From 3 inches allowance. I know the reason why I'm saying this. So that let it not be that if you're putting that on your upper bodies, at the end of the day, you just only add 2. When you sew, when you cut out your distance and sew, you are no longer going to see anything. Do you understand? So please, don't make sure you don't make this mistake. Okay? I'm going to be using 2.5 inches. Please, I'm going to be using exactly the same thing at the half length. 8, 8 7, 7, 8. 8. Okay, plus 2.5. Okay, point 2.5. Is I want I don't want us to be confused. I, I noticed something here. This is our boss line. This is our under boss line, and this is actually our. Are you seeing it? This is the half length. Now this line was a mistake. I didn't even know how we get to mark this like this. And why this one is the allowance? Are you seeing it? Allowance. Okay, so at the end of the day, you guys will notice that we have, see, connect from here, are you seeing it, to here, down to this point. Now, let me cut this thing out, so for it not to confuse any of us here. Okay, guys, are you seeing it? Okay, so now we are done with our body measurement. Next thing we are going to be doing now is construct the neck. Now, this part is one of the most critical parts. In order for you to construct it, remember this is an overlap we are working on. It's an overlap and it's also a kind of short color. Now look at what we are going to be doing now. You are going to be getting your neck width. The neck width you are going to be using here is going to be wide. Do you understand? Why is it going to be wide? Because this is an attached, how do I say? This is an attached short color. Part of the short color which is attached is going to be covering the neck width. Do you guys understand this? It's going to be covering the neck width, thereby giving you back the original neck width you're supposed to have like six inches. Do you understand? So that means we are not going to be using our normal neck width that you use on your normal dresses. We are going to make it to be wider. So in other words, what I'm trying to say is that I can use 5 inches here. I can use 4.5. Are you seeing it? Look at it. I can use 4.5. That is actually what I'm going to do. When you expand it, what do you have? 9. That. Now, next is the neck width. Now, why measuring the neck width? Most of us normally make mistakes when we are working on this particular kind of style. We try to start from here. No, this is not where the dress started. It started from the back part. This back part has finally become the front. Which when you wear this clothes, it's not going to be on the front. It's going to be at the center of the shoulder. 
Do you understand? That's how this thing works. So all you have to do is to get your neck depth. Now, telling you the truth, the neck depth of I'm going to be using on this cloth is going to be so down. Yes, it's going to be very, very down. Now the truth is, how do I say it? It's going to be so down because the same thing I explained here. Part of the short collar pieces, hmm? when we are done connecting it, it's going to make it to come up more. So in other words, I prefer making it to be done. Let me tell you the truth. Okay, let me show you guys something. This is how this color is going to be. From here, this is more like from here. Look at it from here down to here. Are you seeing it? From here down to here. Okay, now let me mark it out. Let me mark it out. If I'm to mark it out like this, look at it. Are you guys seeing it? So at the end of the day, what's the neck depth we have? It's very long. It's very long. How many? About 13 inches. Are you seeing it? Okay. It doesn't matter because at the end of the day, when we are done constructing this, it's actually going to go up. Do you understand? And after all, even if it did not go up, some persons used to wear this clothes wearing a camisole inside. But please, I want you to know that the one I'm actually working on now, you are going, can wear it without a camisole. Do you understand? Okay, look at it. Just take your room, connect from here down to this very part. Are you seeing it? So this is the, the reason why we added this twinch is just only for this small thing here. Are you seeing it? That's the reason why we added it. So next thing we are going to do is, we are going to connect with a curve. Are you seeing it? Okay, now let's do something. Cut this thing out. Then open it out. Remember, as you have folded this, this is the line. Are you seeing it? So all you have to do is step down with how many? One inch. Step down with one inch. Okay. So now when you step down with one inch, look at it. When you step down with one inch, connect from here. Are you seeing it? Okay. Look at it, guys. Are you seeing it? It's so cool now. Now, I, I don't want some of us to make this mistake that while cutting here, you cut our body. So next thing we are going to be doing now is, look at it guys, we are going to be opening the, the back. This is the deeper area. Okay, as you can see at this very moment, we are done with cutting the upper bodies. Okay guys, let me explain about the darts. Now, any kind of that you want to put, you can put on this. Do you understand? But the truth is, I'm not going to put this dart that I'm going to be sewing. I'm going to put this dart that I'm pleating. Do you understand? That's the kind of dart I'll be doing here. It's an English dart also. Now look at it, guys. In order to get a dart for these dresses, what? We um, get the nipple to nipple. That is the bust apart. Do you understand? Or it can also be called the bust part. So for a bust of 40 point, what, what should be the 40.5? What should be the bust part? Eight inches. Eight inches. Okay? That means eight divided by two is going to give us four. Are you seeing it? Okay. Then you also have to do what? Add extra half. So it means that at this point, this is where we are going to be pleating. That is just all about the dart. But for those that want to impute a normal dart, see, what I'll be doing on this thing, let me show us really what I want to do on this thing. Look at it. I want to just, this is it. I'm going to be sewing. When I'm sewing, do you understand? It's going to be you like this. Yes, I'm going to play the half on every side, both front and the back. Do you understand? Then for those that want to do a normal dart, I hope that by now, all of us must have known how to do a dart. All you have to do is get this 4.5, which is your boss pan, divided by 2 plus half. Look at it. If this is the boss uh, point, all you have to do is connect. Look at it very well. All you have to do is to connect. The next thing you need to do is from this boss part, step down with how many? One. Are you seeing it? Step down with one. The next thing you need to do from here, mark out half inch. Are you seeing it? Then from here to here, mark out half inch. Then, that's not all. That's not all for me. Look at the underbust. For me, how I do it is I do the same thing at the underbust. From here to here, half. From here to here, half. Okay, some persons don't consider the underboss, they just from here. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. Run it through. I can't say it's bad. Everything you do depends on the, what you really want to achieve. Do you understand? So whichever one is very okay. So now this one I'm actually doing is from here, you connect from here to here. This one, you connect from here to here. Then, in a straight form, connect this one from here to here. Are you seeing it? 
Okay. So this one you did now will give more fitting to the other. Yes, yes, it's going to give more fitting here. Look at the look at the sewing. If you are sewing it, it's going to appear this way. Are you seeing it? Mm -hmm. That is just how it's going to be. Simple. So um I know we must have finished the front datum, but some of us still don't know how to get the dark datum because the, dat, the, ba the back datum is not the same thing as the front datum. The back dart, see, the front dart we are considering from bust stepping down with what? One. Why the back dart we are considering from this chest line? Are you seeing we also step down with what? One. Let me show us something. The back dart. The back dart is from here. Are you seeing it? The ample. Let me show us. The back dart is from the ample okay then this is the center okay there's something i still want to show us if you don't want to frustrate yourself getting all these measurements you can you can always use your pin do you understand get nice points look at it from here to here are you seeing it okay now remember i've not forgotten that we still have the underbust do you understand look at the underbust from here to here Okay, so that means we have a kind of underboss line like this here. We have half inch here, we have half inch here. So look at it, guys. This is the um, armhole length, which is also the chest line. So step down from here to get your one. Are you seeing it? Okay, you can either step down from here with one, half, or nothing, depending on the person's measurements. I know I'm saying this thing, but for this particular person's measurement, I have to step down with one. Look at it, guys. If you check this back that thing and the front that thing, they are not the same thing. They are not even starting at the same point. Rather, they will be ending at the same point. Okay. Are you seeing it? Now, let me show us. Are you seeing where this one started? Are you seeing where this one started? Both of them are different. Do you understand? Now, why is it that it did not start the same place the um, front started? It's because the back did not have, it doesn't have a bust. This thing, when you do this thing like this, it will make it to be perfect. Thereby, for the boss to relax very, very well. Do you understand? Now, if you do the same thing at the back, it will also be puffing as if the back has a boss. Except the own back has a boss too. Do you understand? But all I know is that nobody's back really has boss. Do you understand? So, okay, guys, as you can see, let's work on the trouser part. Now, look, this is the upper bodies. Let's work on the trouser part. Remember, guys, the upper bodies is 18 inches. We added one inch here for the seam allowance. The seam allowance we are talking about is half for here. And I have to join the damp part. Do you understand? That is making it to one page. So next thing we are going to be doing now is we are going to be marking out other measurement points. Now, how do we do that? Okay, guys, look at it. Place your tape here. Remember, it's um, 18 inches. Are you seeing it? Now I want to show you guys something. You can end up removing half here. See, let me show you. You know what this half is for? Remember we left one inch here, that is half here, half here. So this half is also to join this particular one. Okay, look at it. We have half here. Okay, if you like, you can take your ruler and connect it like this. If you like, you can take your ruler and connect it like this. Please. Okay, guys. Um, there's something I really forgot. For this particular trouser part, how did we cut out this particular material that we are using? Now look at it. Remember the tie we are supposed to be using for this particular person is 28 inches. Hope you guys know that particular one. Now 28 divided by 2 is going to be what? 14. Now as you can see, that is what we are actually using here. 14 inches. inches. So talking about the length, how do we get the length of the material which we are going to use for the trouser? You get it by using this formula. That is the total jumpsuit length minus the half length. Now, the total jumpsuit length is 64 inches minus the half length, which is 18 inches. Hope we are correct. Uh, which is going to be giving us what? 40, 40, 46 inches. Now, add extra 2 to 3 inches to it. Now, that 2 inches is for the down part hemming. Are you seeing it? Now, when I say 2 to 3 inches, officially I will say add extra 3 inches to it. Which is for the one, two inches for the damp part I mean, and the other part of it for this particular part. Are you seeing it? For some of the allowance which you are going to add to the half length. Are you seeing it? Look, look at, I marked something here, half inch. This half inch is going to be connecting, look at it. It's going to be connecting with the half inch here. Are you seeing it? So that is it. So the total jumpsuit length minus the half length, which is 64 minus 18, is going to give us 46. So plus extra three inches which is going to be what, 49. Hope I'm correct. Now look at it, at the end of the day, what we have here is a total of 
49 inches. Are you seeing it for the trousers? So this is the, for the front part of the trousers. Now I want you to know something. You can immediately cut out the material for the back part. Now how do you cut out the material? Exactly what you've just done here, do the same thing at the back. But there's a difference between the front and the back. The difference is that the back is always wider than the front. Remember I said that the allowance is going to be from the back. And also for the crotch, the back crotch is always bigger than the front crotch. So that means the back is going to be four inches at least bigger than the, the front. Are you seeing it? The front is 14, while the back is 18. Are you seeing it? So we have the back and the front. But we are going to be working on the front now, which we are after we are done, we are going to use the front, place on the back, and cut the back. Do you guys understand? Okay, so let's continue. This is actually the front part now. So next thing we are going to be doing now is we are going to be marking out other measurement points. Like I've already marked out half inch here. Are you seeing it? So next thing I'll be doing now is I'll place my tape like this. That's if I'm using the full method measurement. I'll place my tape like this. This is the half length. Are you seeing it? Half length. That means knee length is what? Okay, let's say the knee length is 42. Now from here, 42 inches. Now from here, look at it guys, the full jumpsuit length she, is what? 64. Okay, the full jumpsuit length is 64. Remember, what we have here is 60. Are you seeing it? We are going to be adding extra 4 inches plus extra 2 inches for hemi. Okay, we have 60 here. Now look at it. Let's add the 4 inches. Now this one you are seeing here is for the hemi. Are you seeing it? Okay, next thing we need to do is to use our ruler and then connect. There's something else we skipped here while imputing the measurement point. Look at it. From this 18, please, I want you to make sure you focus. From this 18, we're supposed to have the um, hip line. Do you understand? So the hip line in this case is how many do we have there? 28. Okay, the hip line is 20. Why the crotch length is what? 30 inches. Okay, look at it. Are you seeing it? Please, you can also mark it out into two in order to get a straight line. 28 are they? 30 inches. Use your rule to connect, please. Now, as you can see, guys, we have our measurement points. We have the half length. We have the hip length. We have the crotch length. We have the knee length. We have the full length and we have the hemming allowance. Okay, now we have all this point. There's something before we um, continue, there's something I really need to, a tip I really need to give to us. Now look at this tip. You can see we have the crotch length, we have the hip length. Now let me give you this secret. In a situation where you don't have any of these measurements, you can actually get one of them using one. Now let's say you have the crotch length and you need to get the hip length. All you need to do is to step up by extra two inches. Do you understand? That will actually give you the hip length. Now in a situation where you have the hip length, all you need to do is to step down by two inches. That will give you the crunch length. I think you can use that method everywhere, even in your short and the trouser. Do you understand? Your short and trouser. So far as it has to do with the crunch length. Do you understand? Step up or step down to get each and every one of them. Okay, so that's it. So next thing we are going to be doing now is, for the trouser, we are going to be constructing the crotch itself. Do you understand? We are going to be constructing the crotch. Then in order to construct the crotch, we are going to be using this method that we call the hip method. What do I mean by hip method is, we are going to be getting the crotch using the round hip. Do you understand? We are going to be getting the crotch using the round hip. So in this case, the hip is how many? The hip is 11 inches. Now guys, look at it. The hip is 11 inches. Are you saying, it? look at 11. What do we have remaining here? What do we have remaining here? Three inches. That is okay. So all you have to also do is what? From here, mark out 11 inches. Are you seeing it? Now, next thing you have to do is to use your ruler there, connect. Now, what does this mean? It means that from here to here is for the hip. Do you understand? Why from here to here is for the crotch? Do you understand how this thing works? Okay, so next thing we are going to be doing is we are going to be marking the crotch pop. Yes. So how do we get this crotch curve? You guys should remember that when we were doing our armhole curve, it's just almost something as it. Only that this one does not have like armhole effect. So now let's continue. From here, they are going to place your tape and mark out one inch. Then from here, get to the midpoint. Are you seeing it? The midpoint is from here. Then gradually, using your free hand or using any curve that you have, gradually do what? Connect. Are you guys seeing it? 
Okay. So next thing we are going to be doing, which I think we should have done it before now, please. It's just that we are in a haste, which we should have done before now, is to, since we have from here to here 14, are you seeing, we're supposed to get the middle part of this. Please, you can get it at any time, but I advise you to get it even before doing this crutch. You understand? Now look at it, guys. What we have here is 14. Are you seeing it? So divided by 2 is what? 7 inches. So make sure you do it, you get to the damn part. 14, 7 inches, 7 inches, 7 inches. Okay, guys? 7 inches. So at the end of the day, all you have to do is to connect. Now, why are we marking this? This is in order to get an accurate work. Because this, this method we are using is more like an equal method. Now, look at what I mean by this thing now. The essence of marking this middle part is. Now, let's say the round knee that we have. This is the knee point here. We are going to impute the round knee. The round knee that we have is how many? 19 inches. Here. Okay, we are going to be dividing 19 by 4. So, let's divide it. Tell me what you have. Okay, like I said, 19 divided by 4 is... 4, 3, quarter. So the essence of this is to make sure that whatever you give to this side is something you're going to give to this side. Yeah, by having equal measurement. Do you understand? Now let's do it. 4, 3, quarter. So 4, 3, quarter. From here, measure what? 4, 3, quarter. Are you seeing it? Mm -hmm. Why from here also measure 4, 3, quarter. Are you seeing it that whatever that is remaining here is something as what is remaining here? Okay. Now, the damn part, I think we are actually measured for a pencil trouser. But the truth is that for this particular kind of style, I will want a straight cut style. Now, a straight cut is in a situation whereby whatever that is on the knee is something that is at the ankle. Do you understand? Okay. Now, for those that have not watched my um, trouser cutting tutorial, make sure you watch. I'll try to put the link in the description. So, let's continue. Here, mark out for three quarter. And here, also mark out for three quarter. So when you are done, next thing you are going to be doing is you are going to be connecting from here to here. You see the Are you seeing it? Okay. Now, as so we have connected it, please, I want you to know that, that by me looking at my own, it's looking nice. But your, your own, however you measure, just make sure that here is not sharp. That's sharp. Do you understand? If it is sharp, make sure you do what? On sharpen it. Yes, silence it, please. Make sure you do that. Now, guys, I want you to know something. You see this material that is worn here? Please, you have to double your own. Do you understand? Now, why my own is worn here is because I'm making use of a pattern paper. If you're making use of a fabric to cut this thing immediately, make sure you double it so as to get the left and the right side of the front part. Do you understand? Okay. Okay, guys. So now look at this. As you can see, this is the back part. When I was explaining about this, I said that the front and the back is the same. Just that the back has to be wider than the front, which was 4 inches. Do you understand? And please, I also forget to tell you that not just only wider with 4 inches, it also has to be longer with at least 1 inch. Do you understand? This is to enable us to add this back effect. I will let you guys understand. I will, I will make sure you guys understand what I mean by this back effect. As you can look at it here, every part is equal. Are you seeing it? But at the end of the day, the back is still longer with one inch. Why is wider with four inches? Do you understand? Then for please, I want you to know something. This one that is wider with four inches, it can actually work for every sizes. Do you understand? But I want you to know that it's usually from three to four. So even if it's three inches that you are using it to still work, use four inches it will work. But what I'm using four inches is so as for you to work for every body. Do you understand? So that's just it. Okay. Now I want you guys to notice something. When you now look at it, guys. This is actually the look at it. Let me release this. This is the. Are you seeing it? This is how it's supposed to be. Share. This is the front part. So these two inches you actually see here is for the overlap, which we are going to place as overlap. Now, this will actually answer the question I know that most of you have here. I know most of you have been asking, why is it that we are not imputing the waist measurement or the half length measurement here? Now, let me show you guys an example. This is why most of us keep failing making a jumpsuit in a very good way, because we feel that we must do everything that the book says. Now, look at it. Now, if I'm to impute the waist, waist is how many? That is the same thing as the half length. Shea, half length is how many divided by four? 25.5. 25. 
35.5 divided by 4 is going to be giving us how many? We have actually divided it before. 8, 7, 8. 8, 7, 8. Okay, look at it. It's supposed to be here. Shane? Yeah? yeah? It's supposed to be here. So, no matter what you do, no matter the allowance you add to it, let's say you add allowances here, Shane, and you now do some of these things we do on trouser. From here, it's step up by what? 1 or 1.5. Are you seeing it? Then you now shape your trouser and get a very perfect trouser. Are you seeing it? Yeah, it's a very nice trouser. But when I cut this thing, I can tell you that if you're making a jumpsuit, it's a mistake. Like, if you immediately cut this thing, it's a full mistake. Why? Because for me, you don't need to cut it because, see, you only need to apply your waist effect when you are done coupling. Apply it and see. Let me show you. I've shown us this thing before. Now, look. Without cutting it, when we couple from here to here, are you seeing that it's actually rhyming? Both of them is rhyming. Even though you feel like you want to put that in front, Remember, this one also has that. So it's the same thing that is still going out. Do you understand? See, it's rhyming. So what do I mean by that? When we are coupling, you now impute your shape. Look at it. Are you seeing it? Then you now continue sewing. Are you seeing Everything will be so perfect. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? That just adds to this. Now, let's say in the situation, I cut out this place. Now, look. 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 No matter how I place it, I still have essence. When I'm coupling, I will not couple using the original body shape. Do you guys understand this one very well? Okay, so that's the reason. So next thing we are going to be doing now is, let's continue. Let's add the allowance we are going to be adding for the back. Hope you guys know why, the, why we must add this allowance. Not just that we need allowance to sew, but the back of a body is mostly bigger than, like especially the back of a trouser of our back, back of our trouser part, do you understand? It's usually bigger. You can see your bum bum, do you understand? The front does not have any bigger part, the back has bum bum. We call it yam leg. Do you understand? So, because of all these things, all these conditions, eh, we, we are we are expected to make the back bigger. Do you understand? So let's start by making the back bigger. From here we say two inches, are you saying it? From here we say is what? Two inches. From here is two inches, are you saying it? From here, remember, it's always three to four inches. So for the sake of this tutorial, let's be using four inches. Okay. Then, I want to let you know something. This actually goes in descending form. If it is 4 inches here, that means around here should be what? 3.5. Around here should be what? 3. Around here should be what? 2.5. Shape. Around here should be 2 downwards. 2 downwards. Now, finally, what we have to do now is, look at it from here. From here, we have to connect it to here. Are you seeing it? Now, what's the essence of this thing I've just done? Now, if you know when you're working on a normal trouser, you do, we don't only have this one, we also have this effect here. Are you seeing it? We also, we call it the waist effect for trousers, but we don't use it on jumpsuit, especially the one in front. But you see the one at the back, we use it for jumpsuit because it's also an ease, so as to allow us to sit down properly. Do you understand? Because the back is always bigger than the front. If you don't add this, this back waist effect, it will be hard for you to see that properly, except you're working with a stretchy material. Please, I want you to know that. So at the end of the day, let me do the cutting. Okay, so next thing I want you to do is to cross check to see whether when you are sewing it, whether it's going to properly run. Do you understand? You must do this. Now look at it, cross check like this. Are you seeing it? This is as if you are sewing it, just to make sure that it will run while you are sewing it. Let it not be that after you are done cutting, it is not going to run. Is it equal? Yes. yes. It is actually equal. In a case whereby you think it is not equal, how many is it more? In a case whereby you think it is not equal, whatever it is, cut it off. Do you understand? Cut it off and do what? Look at it. Keep it like this. Make sure you... Are you seeing it? Trim it out. Making sure he relaxes on this very point. Are you seeing? So you check it back again. At the end of the day, you notice that it is equal. Okay. Now, by me looking at this, you can see that we are actually done cutting the. You can see that we are actually done cutting the upper bodies and the lower bodies. Now, talking about the dart, where is the dart? Like, now I want to show you guys something. Original point of the dart, where the dart is going to be. Now, look at this. I want to let you understand something. Normally, when you're making trouser, you determine where your trouser dart is going to be shaped. Now, for trouser dart, trouser dart is going to be on this ghetto line. Is I forgot to tell us what we call this. This is actually the ghetto line or the traveler's crease. That is what we call it. Ghetto line or traveler's crease. Look at it. From here, take it off. 
this is actually the where the dart is supposed to be originally do you understand when you're making trousers and remember normal trousers here you must actually cut it off do you understand according to the shape of the person but this is not a normal trouser, this is a jumpsuit that's why there's also a difference between trousers and the jumpsuit do you understand see fashion academy for male and female plenty plenty style Different garments, anywhere you there, no be wahala. Make you call our number. We the teach people how to be a fashion designer. Designer, Ankara bag we did.